Hello, I'm Douglas. I started making video tutorials way back in 2004 or 5, but my career in video tutorial creation didn't really get started until the video guy himself, Gary, noticed the value in them and introduced me to one of his friends in Avid. That was back in 2008. And this little tutorial is my way of thanking Gary and Video Guys for getting me started. Now, although I'm from Scotland and I actually live permanently in Japan nowadays, when I recently changed my NLE of choice from Media Composer to Edius, I felt it natural to turn to Video Guys all the way over in the USA to buy my copy of Edius. And in this tutorial, I'm going to use two products which are sold by Video Guys. I'm going to use Edius 7 and Boris Red 5.5. Here in Edius, I have a clip on the timeline. It's about 17 seconds long. Uh, it's these drummers here. I don't need the effect to be placed on the whole of the clip, so I'm going to split the clip into two parts, around about here. And in Edius I do that by make sure I have the track selected, the clip selected, and then I just press C to cut. And I'm going to apply the effect to the first part of the clip here. In the Effect Palette, under Effects, Video Filters, where I have installed Boris Red. If I scroll down, I'll find the Boris Red button here. And I drag this down onto the clip. After I've placed it on the clip, I can also see it here in the information window for this clip. And I'll launch Boris Red by double clicking here. Now in Boris Red, the first thing I always do is check that the cursor, or the CTI as it's known, is in the home position. If this is the first time you've opened Boris Red, you probably don't have the same layout as I have. On your own layout, you should at least have the composite window showing. You should also have the control panel showing and the timeline. It's these three windows that I'm going to be using to do the effect. I'd also suggest that you look at this key here, and if you find that it's on a red background like this, which means that keyframes will be automatically created when I start moving things around, something like in the layouter, Actually, in the layouter, I find it's a very useful function, but here in Boris Red, I prefer to have complete control myself over when I create keyframes and what values and parameters they have. So click on the red background so it turns to grey. With this track selected, go up to Filters, down to Effects, and you'll find a whole collection of BCC filters here. For this effect, I'm going to choose the Pencil Sketch. Click. And now you see the BCC Pencil Sketch is nested here inside of the video track. I want this video track to fade in over the first one second of the effect. I'll select the video one track just to be safe and make sure that I'm actually changing this keyframes parameters, I'm going to click on it. And then in the control panel, I'm going to go here to opacity and change the opacity to zero. When I do that, the pencil sketch will disappear. To the left of the zeros here is the interpolation box. Click on the interpolation box and change the interpolation to linear. 
move the CTI, the cursor, along to one second. I can do that by dragging here and keeping my eye on that box over there. Or click on the time code here and then enter one zero zero one second zero frames enter now the cti is at one second i hold down control and press n to make a keyframe and at this keyframe i want the opacity now to be 100 and from here i want the opacity to remain at 100 so I have to change the interpolation again, and this time I change it to hold. So now the fade-in is working. Now I'm going to select the pencil sketch track again. And I don't want the pencil sketch to start changing until I get to the two second mark. So go back up to time, two, zero, zero. Enter. Control N to make a keyframe here. And from here, things will start to change. Let me just scroll down. The parameter I want to change is this one here, mix with original. At the moment, you can see it's zero. So from here, I want the things to start happening, and I want them to happen in a linear fashion. So click on the interpolation box and choose linear and from here I want the mix with original to change to 100% I want it to be at 100% when the cursor reaches the 12 second mark click on time enter 12 zero, zero. now the cursor is at the 12 second mark control N to make a keyframe and at this keyframe Mix with original should be 100. From this keyframe, it should stay at 100. But if you look, you'll see that the interpolation setting is still on linear. So you must change this again to hold so that the parameter will not change from here. That is the first part ready. I'll twiddle up the video track so that it's out of the way for the moment. Click on the grey area to deselect the video track. Hold down Control and press K to make a new track. When I did that, you'll see that it looks like the effect has disappeared from the video track. That's not the case. In fact, the effect is still here on the lower video track. But now I've added copy of the V1 track from Edius and there are no effects on it. I want to change the media here from the V1 track in EDIUS to a still image file. So I navigate to my folder where I have the image file. And first of all, I want the Gaijin Eyes logo. I'm going to move the CTI along so the effect will appear. And find the spot where I want to have the logo in its final position and use Control n to make a keyframe on the logo's track. It's very difficult to see the logo at the moment. First of all, I want to scale this up to around 180%, I think. And then I want to move it down into the position I want it to be in when it there. Also, to make it stand out a little more, I'm going to add a shadow so here under the controls panel, click on shadow, switch on the shadow. Now this is where the logo will stop after it comes onto the scene. So from here, I want this to hold that position. So go back to the position tab under the controls panel. And when it moves into the scene, it's moving on the X axis. So in this position now, I want the x-axis interpolation not to be constant. I want it to be on hold. The y position isn't going to change 
so it's okay if it's left on constant. I want the logo to start appearing just after the fade in is finished. So we're fading in here and just about here I want the logo to start appearing from the left. If I look at the time there it says 103. I'm going to select the first keyframe here and under key I'll enter 103. Now you see the keyframe jumped to the position where I want the logo to start coming in to the scene. So from this keyframe I'm going to change the position X. I click here and I drag it so it disappears off the scene here. There we are. And I want position X to be linear. Now if I scrub through You'll see the Kaijin Eyes comes in from the left. When it gets to this keyframe, it holds. At 12 and a half seconds, I'll make another keyframe and I'll go to the Opacity control, make this linear. Then I'll go to the final keyframe here, go to Opacity and make it zero. So I'll have a text which will fade out there. With the Guy Genai's logo track still selected, I'll hold down Control and press D. This will actually duplicate my track. Click on the Track Media button, Still Image File, and this time I'll choose the Video Guy's logo. I'll go to the position where the Video Guy's logo should be on screen there it is, but because I duplicated the Gaijin Eyes track, Video Guys is actually positioned above Gaijin Eyes. Go to Position X and drag Video Guys sideways till it's in the position I want it. I think Video Guys is a little too big for me here. Scale is at 180, same as Gaijin Eyes. Let's just Grab the scale X here and drag this down a little, maybe about there. Now I can change the position to a little. And that's the final position, as it's a copy of the Guy Genai's track. At this keyframe, the Video Guy's logo is also out to the left. I want it to come in from the right, so select the keyframe, drag position X for Video Guy's over to the right and let it come in from the right side there. If I scrub through, you'll see now that they come in from their own sides and meet. They also both fade out together. Apply. Back in Edius and I have to render this effect. So there we are. Let's go back and take a look at the whole thing. And that is my offering to Gary and the video guys for helping me get started in the world of video tutorial creation. Take a look at video guys homepage and check out Edius and Boris Red. One nice thing nowadays about Boris Red, since 5.5, Boris Red will now plug into most of the NLEs you may have on your system. You no longer have to buy an NLE specific version of Boris Red. And that's all from me over here in Japan. I hope we'll meet again in some other tutorial in the future. Bye.